Hey guys, welcome to Digit Dotin, and what we have for you today is the review of the Zebronics Juke Bar 9700 Pro Dolby Atmos Soundbar, and we're just going to call it the Zebronics Dolby Atmos Soundbar going forward. It is priced at 17,999 rupees on its website, and uh, online on e commerce website stores, you can get it for a little bit cheaper. We've seen it go down by 1,000, 2,000 rupees during the sale period. So know that the maximum you'll pay for this is about 18,000 rupees. But First of all, how is the performance of Dolby Atmos on a budget soundbar? And secondly, uh, what are the features, the connectivity, and should you really consider this over the options? Now, let's quickly start with the build and design of this soundbar. It has a mesh grille in the front and the top. It has upward firing drivers as well, which is something that we haven't seen on a budget soundbar, especially on one that also boasts of Dolby Atmos. In fact, we haven't seen upward firing drivers on some mid-range soundbars as well. So that way it gets a thumbs up. Uh, the subwoofer is not wireless on this one. It connects to uh, the soundbar with a wire. So you have to keep the soundbar and the subwoofer in the vicinity of each other. So you can't place the, sub the subwoofer somewhere else uh, if that's something that you're thinking of. But the cable is uh, fairly long, so you shouldn't face much of a problem. Uh, the soundbar has a little display up front which shows you the volume controls, uh, the kind of audio that's playing. So if it's either Dolby Digital or Dolby Atmos, you do get that uh, little prompt up front. You also get the Bluetooth connectivity out there. So it is quite uh, informative even though the display is a little small. At the back you have all the connectivity options which has aux, optical, HDMI, ARC and get this it has two HDMI pass through ports and both of them are 4K and HDR enabled so that's great. I mean if you're going to use the ARC port on your TV you not only get that port back but an additional port and what we did was we connected our Xbox One X onto uh, the TV via the soundbar and we got a 4K pass through, we got HDR pass through and the soundbar played a uh, could decode Dolby Atmos as well so that is something to consider. Now while the soundbar is actually quite feature rich where it falls short is with its performance and before we get into that I just want to show you guys this. This is the remote control. That is my dog scratching at the back right there. Things happen in the house. Anyway, this is the remote control and uh, apart from the power and the mute, you also get the ability to control the input which is the different sources and the volume control. So if you have let's say your Bluetooth or a USB device connected uh, to the soundbar to play back music, then you can of course use the play, pause and uh, the next previous to change the soundtracks. You have four different modes to choose from which is music, news, movies and 3D along with the ability to control treble and bass. But all that would have been great if the sound output from the soundbar was actually really good. The one place where it lacks or rather has a lot of is in the bass. So this is a very bass heavy soundbar and that is something that actually we thought was very disappointing. Now, Bass is something that you should only feel when let's say you have large thunders in action movies or you have dramatic music playing back or you have let's say some an iceberg breaking in the background in Titanic for example. You, it, it is very specific, it's very momentous and on the soundbar the bass is just too overpowering for everyday use. Even when we listen to music and the songs aren't really bass heavy, the bass can actually get overwhelming on this soundbar. The only preset where we found it to be a little normal was with the news preset and that kind of actually makes the vocals uh, a little more prominent than everything else so the sound signature overall doesn't feel that great if you need to use the news preset on any other preset beat music movies you can take the bass down to minus four and it still did not uh, help make the listening experience any better or bring the bass down and this kind of just ruins the whole listening experience of this soundbar, which makes it really hard for us to recommend. As far as Dolby Atmos is concerned, yes, the soundbar does give you good channel separation between the left and right, but don't expect the sound to come from on top of you or from behind you, because we, even, we haven't had that experience on more expensive uh, soundbars that boast of Dolby Atmos and DTS-X virtual surround sound. So that is a bit of a bummer. So while this soundbar does have great connectivity options overall, where it lacks is in the thing that matters the most is with the sound performance. Now, if surround sound is something that's really important to you, you can of course look at a soundbar like the Sony HT-S20R, which we reviewed earlier this year. It is a 5.1 setup. So you have the soundbar up front, you have two satellite speakers for surround sound, and you have a subwoofer and all the connectivity options go in there. You don't have have any HDMI pass-through ports on the Sony but you do 
get HDMI ARC, which is great, along with Bluetooth and other connectivity options on that one. So there you have it, guys. That was our review of the Zebronics uh, Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar. As always, you can let us know what you thought of this review in the comment section below. And for more from the world of technology, you can subscribe to our channel. We will catch you in another video. It's goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.